Chat GPT inspired market fervor has faded somewhat. Investors are looking for more details on how companies are monetizing AI. And cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike has been doubling down on integrating generative AI into its security programs as it aims to detect breaches and counteract vulnerabilities. Enter Charlotte, CrowdStrike's program to speed and consolidate its cybersecurity offerings. CrowdStrike CEO George Kurtz is joining us now to discuss. Um, don't just want to keep it to Charlotte, but let's start with Charlotte, George. Um, it's good to see you, by the way. Thanks for being you with too. us. Um, talk to us about the reception for it thus far um, and sort of how widely and broadly you expect uh, Charlotte to be adopted by your clients. Sure. We're really excited about Charlotte for a couple of reasons, and our customers are excited, more importantly. So when we think about generative AI, uh, as you said, some of, the, uh, some of the excitement has faded a bit because I think a lot of people, when they started using something like ChatGPT got excited, but it was a conversation and then it faded. And really, when we think about security and the use cases, we thought, well, how do we, how do we change the, the whole model? Uh, as opposed to having just a chat bot, how do we have Charlotte actually do work for a, a, a customer of ours? And one of the areas that we really focused on was SOC automation. That is the security analyst that has to come in and put an eight hour shift in and triage alerts and figure out where the threats are, how it applies into their environment. That's like eight hours of a lot of grunt work. How can we take that eight hours and compress it into 10 minutes with Charlotte where the analysts can have a conversation with Charlotte, ask about the latest threats, how it applies to them, and then have them actually take act, Charlotte take action on their behalf, given the automation of the Falcon platform. So we think it's going to revolutionize security, and we're really excited to talk more about it at Falcon, uh, our user conference in September in Las Vegas. George, I think one of the considerations that many CEOs or executives who are implementing or deploying some type of generative AI or just largely artificial intelligence module into suites is how do they make sure that it doesn't cannibalize other parts of their business? How do you think about that at CrowdStrike and where Charlotte gets layered into or layered onto other services, but perhaps doesn't take away from the revenues that CrowdStrike has come to expect from some of those other services that are, that are offered to customers and, and currently right. paid into? <clears throat> It's a great question, and I think there's a lot of companies that are thinking about how they monetize and, and struggling. Uh, we have a plan to monetize it. We're going to announce that at Falcon, but we think it's going to add a lot of value to a, a customer. If we think about how expensive it is for a SOC analyst to be hired, how hard it is to keep them, how hard it is to find them, um, if we can provide value as a foundational service across all the modules that we have, we think we can actually, uh, again, create an ROI for a customer where we can actually monetize and have them pay for it. So our goal is to be able to uh, enhance our revenue opportunity as opposed to just have it as a cost. Uh, here's a weird question, George. Does the SOC analyst being able to have access to this, is the job more boring because, because of this? Yeah. If you have AI doing a lot of these functions? Well, I think uh, in security, sometimes you like boring, right? You want to be able to understand what's happening very quickly, uh, determine if you have threats or risk and, and what to do about it. And really what we're saying is the SOC analyst doesn't go away. But if you think about three levels, level one is sort of doing a lot of the grunt work and, and uh, putting this information together and triaging. Level two and level three is kind of higher order operations of what does it really mean? What's the strategy? Um, how do we uh, enable the business from a security perspective? And that's where humans should be spending their time. So if, if we can drive automation and take a lot of the heavy lifting off their plate, we can free them up for doing things that humans are really good at. And that's really where we think they should be spending their time. And I think they're, they're going to uh, appreciate the productivity gains. It, it's hard to imagine that you wouldn't need fewer people as a result of this, George. Well, I think what it does is it enables the uh, SOC to be more productive. <clears throat> so does it mean they're going to be hiring a whole bunch more people? Maybe not, right? There's a productivity gain. But the people they have are going to be more productive and focused on the right things. And I think that's what, what's important. Um, just simple things like uh, creating these sort of sh these shell scripts that do things on an endpoint or gather information, that takes time and effort. You can do that seamlessly with uh, generative AI. So there's a lot of things that take time and effort. And if we can put the power of Charlotte AI in every analyst's hands, 
we think that's additive for our customers. And we think, again, it's a, it's a revenue stream that we can monetize. And when you think about that monetization and the deal making that CrowdStrike is being able to do right now, I mean, we heard in Q2 over 80% more deals involving eight or more modules than a year ago were, be, were able to be closed here. When you think about the environment for deal making, what, what is the, the level of scrutiny compared to or relative to quarters past where we had continued to hear companies being more judicious about how much capital that they might be deploying towards spends for some of the different applications or software, app, or, or software uh, that they're using for their corporations? Where, where is it in comparison at this point? Sure, if you look over the last year, really started to see the effect in, in Q3 last year of the, the macro headwinds. And I don't think it's gotten any better or any worse, but there's still a tremendous amount of scrutiny for each deal. Uh, more signatures, more scrutiny, uh, more just time to, to get deals done. I think we've uh, we've tried to manage that uh, from a sales execution perspective. We put a, a lot of scrutiny on each deal and we wanna make sure that we can land them within the quarter. And a big part of what we've been able to do is to consolidate across the industry. So we're getting bigger deals, great, but it does take longer to get these deals. But the benefit is eight modules. When you have eight modules that you can basically land with, you know, you're talking about a true platform and true ROI for our customers. And I think that's in part the success that you're seeing in the numbers. George, always a pleasure to get some of your time, your insights here. Yeah, you feel more secure just talking with a cybersecurity CEO, George Kurtz, CrowdStrike CEO. Thanks so much for taking the time. Great to be here. Thank you.